Hello and how are you? My name is Mohin Lembat and I welcome you to our fourth session of creating a complete inventory management system using Laravel and uh, Flutter. So in this system, we're going, I mean in our today's session, we're going to resume from how I started the previous lecture. And as you know, we always do uh, 60 minutes and here is our timer. So I'm going to start our timer here and then we'll start counting for the next 60 minutes then after 60 minutes we shall have a short break i mean okay we shall pause until tomorrow all right okay so without wasting much time let's go straight into this business so if you still remember in the previous lecture we were able to create a company but we said that uh we need uh like well, after you've created a company we need to say that okay a person that you've created automatically he belongs to that company the admin the administrator of that company he belonged to that company that's where we got introduced to what we call hooks we looked at different types of hooks so one of the hooks that we looked at is the updated hook and we even tested it we saw that uh, when we we update uh, uh, a function i mean update uh, uh, an item we were able to get its what its uh, uh, its data through the updated hook so now in this level, this level after update on the updated, I'm going to get the person, the company owner. Okay, so to get the company owner, I'm just going to say owner equals to uh, user dot find. So I mean user. So I find from the table of users a person who has this what, who has this company owner ID. Remember this company has what we call company owner ID. So this is the person who below who has this company ID. So I'll check if if this is got now. Let's say that this that user is not found. Okay. So I'll not allow this company to be created. Okay. So you just simply do what you call throw. So you throw an exception. This is how you throw an exception and say the company owner was not found. Okay. So if it is successful, let's say that the owner was found, you can just dump here. You can dump here the owner. So let's go ahead and refresh this. You know, this logic, what you're doing here, we're updating the company name. If you still remember, we update the company name here. We get the company and then we update its name and then we save. And then we, we, we do what? We trigger this updated hook. Okay. So if I come here and refresh, now you can see uh, our hook is working. It is getting the company owner and dump. It is getting the company owner data and dump it. So this is, you see, it is coming from the admin users table and then this is a company owner. So what I need to do right now, I need to change this company ID, okay? Company ID of this owner and make it to be the ID of this particular company that we are updating. So to do that, after getting the company owner, I'm going to say company, uh, company ID equals to this company ID. So by doing like this, I'll have set the company owner to have or to belong to this part this particular company id so that when this company owner logs in we shall be able to know the company that he or she belongs in so after doing that and then i make sure that i save this change so i save like this so if i refresh now you see here it is null so if i refresh now you see that it has been updated that now the company id of this person is company one so this is when you can be able to change uh the ownership of a company or something like that so uh i'll go ahead and now remove this uh, die and also remove this one so i know now this logic is working it is getting the company owner and uh, and and set him when it is updated so this thing is going to happen twice it's going to happen when you're updating and also when you're creating so i'm also going to listen to created so I'm just going to copy this same function and then after I'm going to do what I'm going to do what you call created I'm going to listen to created event so when a company has finished being created when a company is created I'll go ahead and get the owner of that particular company and make him belong to that company so by being like this you shall be able to have companies and their respective owners I hope you've understood that so after doing that i'm going to come here to our controller and remove this uh testing information i can just comment it it's the one that we are using for testing 
so i'll come and refresh now everything should be fine so i can come here and remove this uh, random thing that i was adding on the name and then update so everything is you see the owner id is this one but i want the company owner of this yes so the owner id of this company is this id number two you see it is there so let's create also the company too okay the company too so i can come here company and then put the owner should be this company who has i mean the company owner this user has the company id three and then i say company company three and then i just put here some fake filler let me use fake filler fake filler ah so company this one i want to call this one company two this is the second company though the owner has id3 because the first id is taken by the super admin so this is our first camp our second company okay let me go ahead and do it and update so if i come here to the list i don't know why it is not redirecting i don't know why anyway i'll find out why it is not redirecting so you can see now you can see that here is the company id3 so now if i go to the tables of users okay if i go to the table of users users admin users where is it admin users here now you can see now this table can you see this table has been updated so this uh company owner one now we know the company where they belong to and then company owner two we now know the company where they belong so by doing like this you can you can be able to automatically update the company owner so that is a very powerful technique that you'll need throughout your what uh, your processes of creating what of managing the system that is so 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 nice so it means that we have finished this first logic however this table designing this table okay let okay let us first finish organizing this table then we proceed to the next module all right let us organize this table and make it much more decent so i'm going to teach you how to organize these tables and make them much more decent so here you can select all and delete something like that all right let's uh, organize this table and make it much more decent so we're going to come here to um to the grid the controller and then come to grid so i don't want to display the ids can lead to insecurity issues i want to display when the so if we don't want the column you just remove it okay uh now oh i can hide it you can hide it by default by just simply adding this hide then it will be hidden so if i refresh here the id is there but it's hidden so if you want to see it you click here and then you will see it here and then you'll be able to do what uh to click on submit and unhide it you see it will go ahead and show up there so all right so by default it will be hidden okay so i want to now go ahead and uh, uh display the created ad but this created art it is bringing the data as it is saved in what in the database but i want to organize it in so it can look much more better so to organize it you have to attach what you call display attach call a function called display like this and then say write function and then open this curl bracket and then move in this curl bracket just pause the video and see how i've done this one and then say return then i can say date i put y m and d and then i get the data of created art and then i say str to time and then i pass this one so by doing like this it will be able to organize our date so you can pause the video and see how i've done it so this display it is just a function that overrides the display or thing that you want to display let's say that i want to display there my name so i can just simply return there and say mohindo so in this created art table it's going to display my name so i want to display just the data that is organized of the date so i'll have to do what to do like this so by doing like this we'll see that this data is now much more organized the date when someone was registered okay so i can just simply maybe say created or registered okay so registered it will be able to show that all right now i want it maybe to be sortable someone i should maybe sort to ascending and sort to descending if you want to do that you just simply come here and attach this method called sortable so by doing like this someone will be able to sort in ascending order and descending order okay i want to remove when the last time it was updated i can remove that column uh -huh. now i want here to display the company owner 
so the company owner i want to display the company owner so to display the company owner i'm just simply going to say display okay i want to display his name and then i say user equals to user find i get the company owner id and i find that user okay if i find it's null i just say maybe not found and then if it's not null i go ahead and return back his name and then i make it also sortable okay something like that so if i come here and refresh now instead of having id here the owners okay i'll be able to do what to have the um the the company owner names you see the company owner name here is one okay is one something like that you see the owners are now being shown in form of name instead of what of ids uh this one is company name so i can add here the word uh company name and they make it also sortable all right and then so maybe i'll also need to have an email a company logo i can leave it for now the website i can leave it about i can leave it you can you can leave them or you can delete them or you can hide them okay so let me just or let me hide them you can just hide them all right i can hide this one you can hide this one you can hide this one so this status to set whether a company is active or not maybe this one i can mean it okay so if it is active i return back active it is not active i return inactive i'll need that one let me make it active a company expiry date i will need that one i can also override its date and display it in that format uh, the address of the company i don't need it the phone number of the company i need it i may need to see the phone number of a company real quick the second phone number i may hide it by default the pure box i may hide it the color I may hide it the slogan i may hide it this facebook i may hide these rest ones so if i come and refresh you'll see that our table looks much more decent for the what for the companies all right so i don't want to see this thing of um of what of uh selecting and be able to delete i don't want to see this so if i don't want to see it i have to disable it so if i want to disable it i'll come here to grid and then i say grid and then i say uh, disable 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 batch actions as it is there so when i say disable batch actions it will go ahead and disable for me those actions that thing that i was having for multiple selecting i don't need it all right so that is beautiful i want to put here a search a, a search bar in case i have so many companies i should be able to search those companies so i can go ahead and say uh quick search i i come to this grid and i say quick quick search and then maybe i can search a company by name so these are the variable that i need to search with okay by name okay let me search just by name and and okay let me just search by name so you can if one search only by name you can put there if one search by phone number can put there comma phone number so you can be able to search by phone number also maybe by email those are make sense so if i save and come and refresh you'll see that i'll be able to do what uh to search here a company with simplicity by just simply putting a company to for example right here two it will bring me the company it has to less so let's assume that i have like um 1000 companies using my system i can simply search uh from here using that uh search bar which is very very simple for beginning i mean for the for the beginning we can leave this one at this level i can see 50 companies per page for the starters i can leave this one at this level okay i can leave it at that level so we can proceed to another thing and it is very responsive to the mobile phone in a way that if i open it on a samsung phone it will look like this okay which is uh, absolutely beautiful okay if i want to edit a company just simply come here and say edit that is nice all right so for the status we can leave this one here let us proceed to the next thing okay so let's go to our erd erd or erd erd entity relationship diagram it's erd not drd okay so let us see so we have finished this load table we have finished this table and we've gone step by step so watch very carefully to make sure that you understand each table or each module without skipping any. There is no magic that I'm using right now.
everything is straight forward all right so now we go to the stock category yeah then after okay we go to the to the financial year okay to the financial year after financial year we go to the what to the stock category okay so that's let's do that let's do that now we know that we know that uh, it is the company that is going to work with uh, managing the stock not we administrators it is the company so now we are going to log in as what and uh, as the companies and then we see how we can start working with these ones all right so let's do that so i'll come here uh, to the system i'm going to come here to the users i'm going to come here to the first company administrator which is this one okay this company administrator i'm going to okay his username is called company admin okay i mean company admin one i think that's enough and then his password is 4321 so i can be able i can even be able to change the administrator's password all right so let me log out and then log in as a what as a company administrator so one thing that uh, i showed you is the menu if you still remember the menu we said that when you're creating these companies you don't want the company administrators i mean the company owners to be able to create their own companies so that's why we're able to lock this menu to only the what the admin roles all right let me use another browser let me use google chrome uh to work as the company uh what are the company admin so this one is for the super administrator this one's going to be for the company administrators so i'm going to go to locals okay i'm going to go to one two it's what the ip is the ip is one one two seven one two seven yeah i think this one is it that one one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one why is it not working okay let me copy it here come to chrome paste it there all right there you go so here i'm going to log in as the company owner so let's say that i've purchased a license from your system and i now need to start using your system so i have to you have created for me the user admin and the password so i'm going to log in as a company owner here so to do that i'm going to come here to um, to what to our users and then i come to this first company owner this one i just copy his username i come and paste it here which is company admin one and then the password 4321 and then i log in so when i log in one different thing that you should see this person can only see dashboard at this moment they can only see dashboard they cannot see nothing else anything else but here when i'm because this person has a role of what of company admin so he has a role lower than ours but here when i'm logging as a super admin i'm able to see companies so that is the whole point of setting the roles and how we were how we're able to do that we're able to do that by using these menus okay so if you still remember uh sorry menu if you still remember for example when you're editing this menu dashboard is for everyone the role is not limited uh -huh. if i come here and edit companies companies is only for administrators if i come here and edit the menu for for administrators it's also for administrators okay so when i'm logging as a company owner i cannot create my own company i can only see the company dashboard that is nice all right so now let's go back to our table and see what next we're going to do so right now we're going to start now with the we have finished now the chit chat now um should we begin with the uh, companies being able to add their workers and then after doing that then we come to the stock or we should begin by stock and then or let's begin by stock and then we shall come to these workers company should be able to add their workers of course all right so we are going to begin by creating the table of what of stock category that is the main table then after creating this table of stock categories uh we go ahead and create now the the what the financial years and the rest
All right, so as you know, all right, okay, we're going to have to, um, I'm trying to think, I think we are going to have two main categories. All right, let's, uh, because um, uh, supermarkets and the rest, they are, divide into two main two categories sometimes you may say i want to see only the, the detergents so the detergents there can be so many types of detergents that's why we can have the the powdered soap we can have the liquid soap we can have the the solid soap so sometimes uh, we may need to see okay in detergents which things are in there and then also maybe you may say i want to see in uh, drinks which kind of things do we have in drinks or how much money is locked into drinks so under drinks we can have soft drinks we can have cold drinks and etc so we are going to have a parent category something that we did not have um a main category or main categories something that we do not have in this um structure uh, so uh, this main category is going to be a different model if you want to do something that is not going to confuse us more Now let's go ahead and design a main category. So this 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 stock category will be under main categories Okay, or main stock categories, okay? Or we can say stock categories and under this stock categories you can put now stock subcategories yeah, I think that makes much, much, makes much more sense. All right, so we are going to create now our first model or another model for the company, which is going to be now the stock categories. Then under these stock categories, I'll have now the subcategories. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so... Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to create a model and then we are going to uh, put the migration on that model at the same time. So we're going to come to our important commands text. This is a text that I created by myself here. And uh, I want just to be storing there my important commands. So I should not keep on uh, searching for them. And I don't want to memorize them because I'm not a student. All right. So what are we going to do right now? We're going to do a model called uh, stock category. So we're going to paste this one here. Sorry. I want to copy this name. It's called stock category. Okay. So we're going to come here and say stock category. So you write them like this. At the beginning of each English word, you have to begin with a capital letter. Stock like this. Stock. And then category should begin with the word with a capital letter like this. And use singularity. Don't write in plural don't write in plural repeat so it's going to be our stock category and then you put dash m dash m means for migration so i'll go ahead and copy that command and then go ahead and run it so when i run it you'll see i have already created i've successfully created our stock category here so if i press control and click on it i'll be taken to the what to the migration i mean to the controller i mean to the model of stock category and if I press go to and click here, I'll be taken to the what? The migration of stock categories. And this is the table that I'm going to use. Now it is not migrated yet. So let us determine the columns that we want to put in this what? In this stock category. All right. So the first column that we're going to put there. The first column. Um, the first column that we're going to put there. I'm trying to think. You are going to put their text so it can have as big name as possible. You are going to have their, the name of this category. What is the name of this category? Okay, the next column that you are going to put there. What is the, the, the okay, the first thing, okay, even before I start. The first thing that you have to begin with is the company ID. Where, in which, in which company does this category belong to? That is the very important thing. So here you can use, instead of writing integers, you can use foreign, foreign, foreign ID for like this. You say foreign, then ID in capital letter, beginning with the capital letter and then small letter, for, and then you reference here the, the model that you want to reference. So company, 
foreign id for company and then you say company and then you put class so make sure that this company is imported make sure that this company is here so you say foreign id for company so it is going to be the responsibility of the migration to make sure that the company id is created here so let me remove this one here all right okay so after doing that now let's go ahead and put now the text and put the name so i'll put a text and put the name so this is the name of the what of the of the of the of the category and then i put the description of this category and then i put the status whether it should be active or not active maybe mm, sometimes we need to deactivate the whole category can we ah we don't need that okay let us let us have it sometimes we need to deactivate the whole category uh let's make it a string and then okay another thing that we need is uh the photo of this category because uh we'll design our things to look in uh, a, a nice way so and in, in a what in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a proper way so it's going to be having the image of text category so uh, now for me i always hate uh looping through things and writing complex sqls so what i do i always write a uh, few things that uh, i need at glance like without going without writing so many complex sqls i should be able to get them with simplicity okay though it's not very recommended but i need to be able to get them for example i may need to know the current stock worth okay the current stock worth so if i go i say okay in detergents how much do i have so i need to have that uh field here so it will be updated every time this particular category is updated or a stock item is added to this category and uh, that field should be what should be updated so in the prices that you're going to have in this system you're going to have two prices the buying price and the selling price so it can be able to cater for the what for the for the for the profits okay so i should be able to know what is the buying price or how much money did i invest in these things and how much money am i expecting in these things and how much profit am i expecting in this thing so you need to maintain those two what those two prices or you need to maintain those two those three uh fields the current price the expected okay let us let us maintain four fields i'm trying to brainstorm let us maintain four fields the buying price that is the price the money that you invested in this particular item uh, the selling price the money that you're planning to sell the expected profits the profit that you're expecting in this particular um profit i mean in this particular item and then the profits that you've made so it will be now the money minus what you have and then you put it there I think you're getting it so that are, those are the four presses that are going to maintain so instead of putting them and maybe keep on writing complex sql let us put them here so we just be updating it, this one at the same time and then you get the profits there all right so we're going to have um we're going to have here uh a big integer Okay, so this one going to be uh, buying buying price. By default, it should be zero. Okay, so if you want to see how much money you have invested in this particular category, you just query the buying price. You should be able to see that like zero. And then the selling price, selling price. And then expected profits. And then the what? The 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 current profit. I mean the uh profits profit and I can say and the profit. 
something like that. So I think we need these fields. One, it will be showing the amount of money that I've invested in this particular big category, the money that we're expecting in this category, and this one will help us to know the profit that we're expecting in this category, and then this one will help us to know uh, the, the profits that we've earned in this category. All right, I think this one is enough for the what? For the, for the main store category. I think these are enough, as long as I have the company ID. All right, so let us go ahead and uh, migrate this, okay? Let us go ahead and migrate this. So to do that, we'll just simply come here and say PHP add sun, migrate, and it will be created successfully. So after migrating, so if we come here to our uh, PHP admin, we should be able to see that one more table called what? Called store categories. This one here, okay? With our things there. All right, so after doing that now, let us go ahead and now, uh, let us go ahead and now create the stock. I mean, okay, let us go ahead and, should we, let us go ahead and add it. Uh, let us go ahead and add it here in this, so these companies can be able to create their own stock categories, okay? Let us go ahead and create its controller. All right, so to do that, I'll go ahead and... Uh, Come here and copy this name here in my commands and then I'm going to create a controller for store categories and then come here and put store category. No. Okay, so after doing that, I'm going to run this command. Okay, I'll clean my, my terminal and then I create the store category controller. Press enter. Then we'll have the store category controller. Then I can press control and click on this. Press cut and hold and click on routes and then take us to the what? To our routes. So I'm going to add here another controller for store categories. Okay. So if I come here, if I come here, if I come here, I should be able to see store categories. Okay. Now I'm not able to see, okay, I can access it, but I'm not, I'm not seeing it on the menu. So I'm going to put it on the menu so it can be accessed here. So to do that, I'm just going to come here um at uh, to, to what to i'm going to come here to our menu so i have to come to the administrator side okay where i'm logging as administrator and then come to our menu and then i'm going to add another item on the menu so it's going to be stock categories okay we can have another section called configuration because these store categories are not going to be okay. Let's let us let us put there store categories, store categories, and then okay. And then after we are going to put uh, here uh, a related icon, a relevant icon. I relevant icon. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing a relevant icon. Alright, let me put this one. Alright. And then you go ahead and put here the URI. So categories. Now, I define which users should be able to access this uh, menu item. So I can say maybe super administrators. Okay, I can say maybe. Okay, the super administrators will literally access everything. I can say company owners should be able to access it. And also maybe, um, should we say only the company owner should access it? But most of the time it is workers who are working with things. So I can say company workers, they should also be able to do what? To access it. And then I go ahead and submit. So when I submit, now it means that now I can move this one here. Let me move it here under dashboard. Now it means that this store category should not be able to access, to be accessed even on this dashboard of administrator of companies. So if I come and refresh here, you'll see that the company admin here is able to access the stock what the store categories. So that is nice. That is cool. Okay. So they are able to access the dashboard. They are able to access the store categories. All right. Now let us go ahead and design the form for the store categories. Okay. So let me first go to store categories. 
and change this name to stock categories so this is our control of stock categories so if i come and refresh here we'll have that one let us design the form of stock categories faster faster so come here and click on new so this is our form of stock category so the first thing that we have here is the company id now the company id should not be accessed by anyone okay it should be hidden and be set by default because it's not the responsibility of the person to set their company id so to do that we are going to come to our form here to our form here first of all we are going to get the user who is logged in so to get the user who is logged in we can just simply say u equals to and then we say admin and then say user so by doing like this you'll be able to get the person who is logged in so if i come here and do dd and then do like this i'll be able to do what to get the person who is logged in so this person i'm going to get their company id so I, since every person will have the company id so i'm going to get their what the company id so i can put it here okay so you see you now have the company id there so i want to make this company id to be the default of the company id uh, field here so to do that you just simply say default you just add this default and then you put this user with the company id so it means that this company id will be you see it is there by default is one now i don't want the user to be able to tamper with this company id some user may change it to be four so what does it mean it means that record will be lost it will be for the wrong company so if i refresh here i have this one here so i want to hide it however there is another better way of doing it but for now let us hide it so to hide it you just simply write hidden like this so it will be there but you will not be able to see it so you'll not be able to do what to tamper with it however i'll show you another better way to do it in the back end okay so i'll come here and now put category name so it's going to be a text not a text area so i put here category name and i make it required okay so i put here uh, rules rules required so i can even give it like minimum letters should be three maximum letters should be 255 something like that and it's going to be required so it, someone cannot submit without submitting this information let me try to submit you see i'm set back i must send the uh the company id all right so after doing that uh the next thing i'm going to put the um, now nah, i know the company ID, the description i mean the, the company now nah, the pro <sighs> this is not company my god category category id yeah so this one is hidden already this one will not be shown okay so i'm going to put here category description category description so it's going to be text i can make it as free as possible and i can make it option uh so uh status i'm going to make them to set it to active or active so have something called here radio radio so radio and then after making it radio we give it what we call options okay so option is going to be just an array that has active and then inactive i hope you can see that array i hope you can see it and then by default you can make it to be active I always like keeping my words in capital letters here please okay so all right so like this so by doing like this we're going to achieve this okay so someone can make this category active can make it inactive all right i can also make it uh, to be required so i can just simply put here rules and make it required okay so they can say they're active and then they can be able to set their what their product image okay by just simply putting their image now the buying price the selling price the what price these prices they will be set by the system automatically okay so i'll remove them we don't need them users to what to set that one by themselves so let me organize this so i can copy this description and make it the last after the image 
so if I come and refresh here we shall have something beautiful like this one okay so I put here the category name and then I put here um, the what the photo and then so I can come here and open some chat GPT five main categories for supermarkets so it's a gpt let's give it me so i have ha, 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 ha. yeah you see that's beautiful so if you have the first one fresh products fresh produce and then you have the grocery you have dairy and refrigeration you have frozen foods you have meat so you can have as many as possible, but chat GPT just tell it to give me only five. And under these ones, we have the respective categories under there. All right, let's just take, um, let me say it should be something. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, let's just take. All right, let, uh, let's take this one, fresh produce. Uh, so it's going to be our main category. So I'll just simply come and put it here and then make it active. And then we can get here some photo. Okay. And then let's say I want this one. And then I download it. And then after I just drag and drop it here, you see, and then I can write here some information about this main category, and then I submit. You see, our category has been created, and if you come to our this photo uploaded, let's see if the photo has uploaded. Okay, it is supposed to be under and uh public and uh oh, it's not there let's see yeah and uh, all right i'll i'll figure that out i'll figure that out i'll figure that out i'll surely figure it out for now let's leave it there okay let's just focus on this so you can see our product has been what has been uh our category has been created now let me create a second category come here let's say grocery and then put as grocery and make it also active i can say maybe some details about grocery okay and then update so we have those two main categories listed there okay now there's a challenge there's a challenge let me log in as the second administrator so we have two companies this is a company one okay the first company admin and then you have another company admin now these are two companies who are going to use the same systems okay but they have to see their respective records let me log in at the second company let me create let me get you another browser let me get safari so this is safari okay this is safari okay this is safari i'm going to log in in safari so in google chrome we have administrator one in safari we're going to put there the company admin two let's go ahead and get the logins of the company admin then in brave we have the company admin three let's go ahead and get the company admin two what admin two this is the company admin two uh information so i'll go ahead and put here company admin two and then the password for three two one and then i log in you see now this is the company admin two let me even update this so we can differentiate them company admin one for the first company all right so this is the company administrator two okay this is the second company administrator two and this is the company administrator one for the first company this is for the second company now let's see the challenge if remember this company is the one who has created these categories but the challenge is even if this person clicks on the on the categories they are also be able to see it that is a very big leakage 
<laughs> that's a leakage eh? they are not supposed to see that they are not supposed to see that everyone this one this is administration number two he has not created anything so why is he seeing the things of another person of another company so that is uh, a me that is uh, a, a a a leakage of data so what you're going to do we are going to limit every person to see their own things okay so to do that we are going to come here to our what to our our company models i mean here to the company grid okay so in this grid uh, we are going to get the person who is logged in the person who is logged in it is going to be get by you admin user if you still remember then i'm going to put a condition that's going to be set by the system that it should show the records of this company so to do that you can modify the query by just simply putting grid and then say model sorry model like this and say model open bracket and close it and say where and then put company ad company id equals to the user who is logged in and then in their respective company id so by doing like this it means that we shall be able to show the things of a person who is logged in only for their respective company so if i come here i hope you've seen that so this condition will be written there and before it display anything it first has that condition so it will be showing uh, respective things of a person who is logged in so if I come here and refresh, you'll see the problem has been solved here. I'm seeing our things. But if I come here and refresh, since I've not added anything, you see our table is empty. So by doing like this, it means that now we shall be able to know, okay, these things belong to this person, these things belong to this person. This should be shown here, this should not be shown here. However, there is much more effective way of how you can achieve this. And uh, I will show it to you. For now, let's go with this. So by doing like that, you'll be able to separate the data of the user. That is why we needed a user, a company ID for on each user what on each user model. All right, let's start. let us organize this um, this table very fast, and then we go to subcategories. Why not? Okay, let's organize it. We don't need um, this batch select. Let's get rid of it. I'll show you another better way of how to disable these things. We need quick search. Can maybe quick search. Okay. Uh, what else do we need? Okay. So we have the search engine and then the uh, okay. Maybe the ID here we may need it for just referencing. <laughs> Let me make it sortable. Okay. Uh we do we need to know the date when this category was created? I think we don't need it, but we can hide it and then let me just make it there so it is there i've just displayed it properly but we don't need it there we let us hide it a category don't need when it was created unless you really really need it then you can find it here so we have hidden it okay the company id we don't need to display the company id that is useless and then we need the car the, the product the, the category name so you can put here maybe the word category name okay so you have there category name uh -huh. so we now need the description the description don't need it let us hide it should be only shown when someone needs it and then the status uh, status we should have that one active and not active and then we have the image the image the image the image something called image like this uh, image is called picture i think yeah picture something like that i think yeah but we'll fix that we'll fix that later when you go to products and then we'll come back for this image okay so the photo will be there and then the buying price of uh you can call this an investment investment or the amount that you've added in that category 
and then make it sortable. All right, so this will be showing the money that you've added in that particular category. Okay, so here we can make it um, to display in a number format. So I'm overriding the display and I then put number format. Number format is the one that will be able to put something like uh, something like um, those commands. Eh? Those commands. That's what we call number format. All right. So the investment will be there. All right. So that's the total investment. Uh, so I can put here expected expected sales. So what you're expecting to sell. So this will be the total of uh, the selling prices of that product. And then you can put here the number format and also put here expected what? Expected profits. Okay. And then you put here and profits in this particular category. Something like that. All right. So if I come and refresh, you'll have something beautiful like this. So here someone can be able to know how much have I made in this how much I'm expecting this category, something like that, and how much I've really earned from this category. Okay, so you can know which category they are earning and in which category they are not earning. You can even know in which category you're making losses. Okay, so now after doing that, uh, the next thing that we're going to do, uh, we are going to. The next thing that we're going to do, we're going to now, I think that's it. I think that's categories. That's all you need about categories. You may even disable the export if you want. So that is a uh, simple what? A simple category. All right. So now the next thing that we're going to do, um, um, we're going to, to go ahead and now create the subcategory, stock subcategories. Because as you know, the stock, as, as you still remember here, Chad GPT even told us, they have main categories. And then after, under this one, we have now fruits, vegetables, and then under this one, so I now we'll be able to put in what? The stocks themselves. All right. Now let's go ahead and uh, create now the stock, what? The stock subcategories. So to create the stock sub, to create stock subcategories, uh, we shall just simply simply come here and then in this stock category you're going to put your stock sub category sub category like this okay and then i'm going to create a migration and model i'll go ahead and expand and then paste it there and press enter so when you press enter it will create for us the categories and the migration and the model and the migration so let's go ahead and go to uh, the what? The migration and put there the columns that we want to add there. So this stock, stock subcategory is going to look very much like uh, the stock category. So let us go and just copy the things or the migrations in the stock category and put them here. And then you see what is necessary and what's not necessary. We get rid of it. Okay, so it shall come here. Let's yeah. shall come here and then come here to the stock category and then copy a few things from it that are going to add in there in the stock subcategory like this and then come here to stock subcategory and then paste them there well, let us see what is what is relevant what is not relevant first of all the the company id we need it okay we need it so make sure it is imported make sure it is imported like this okay we shall need the name we shall need description we shall need status we shall need the image or the photo we shall need the buying price ah no i don't think we need uh, yes we need the buying price so you should be able to determine in this subcategory how much have you invested in it okay we shall need the selling price to determine that in this subcategory how much you've sold okay we shall need also expected profits in this subcategory how much have you made in this subcategory how much have you earned so we shall need those fields we shall need literally all of them now this subcategory it is going to have 
Uh, okay, okay, we shall also need now the category, the parent category where it belongs. Okay, so you have put store category. So it's going to be for info store category. So every stock subcategory must belong to a what to a stock category, to a main category. Okay, so this is going to be a child of this one. Now, okay, now which things I do need to add? Uh, we need to add uh, the measuring unit. Okay, so some some you know different products with different what with different measuring units. So we need to put the measuring unit. We need to put measuring unit. So it's going to be just a string. I put here measuring unit. Okay, after putting measuring unit. Uh, the next thing that we're going to put, let's not make it nullable, so it should be necessary. So measuring unit. So the next thing you're going to put, what you need to put, uh, reorder level. So you need current quantity. So you may need to know how much quantity do you have in this particular stock at particular time. You need reorder level, reorder level. At which level should the stock, um, should the stock warn you? Okay. So in the current quantity is less than the order level, we should be able to make a warning. Okay. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? I think that's it. I think that is it. Yeah. I think that's it. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and migrate. So those are the things that we need to create a what? A stock at subcategory. Let's go ahead and migrate this. So I'll go ahead and migrate. So we shall have our migration there. Press control to go to it. Okay, we shall we have migrated it already. So we have migrated this to category, subcategory. Let's create for it a controller before our time is up. I see you're remaining two minutes. Let's create it for this subcategory controller. So I'll come here and copy this subcategory controller and then come and remove this okay and then come and also put this one here so let's go ahead and create copy this and then create a controller so we have here our route i'll copy the whole route and then click on this routes and then come and paste it here after doing that i'm going to go ahead and add it on the menu so to add it on the menu i'll come here to the admin dashboard which is this one And come here to menu and come here and add uh, stock stock sub categories and then come here and put maybe a relevant icon uh, let me choose and there's an icon that I thought I can use here which is going to be this one and then put the URI here. So who can access this one? Company owner and also the workers should be able to access this subcategory. I submit, I refresh, I move it under. Should it be, let it be on top because subcategories will be used much more than main categories. So I save, I come here and refresh now. You should be able to see that you have there subcategories there, something like that. Come here and refresh, you have sub categories here. All right, so now in the next video, we are going to see how we can now design this form and make it make sense. And I hope in the next video, it is a point now we'll be able to add the products, working with images, and putting this whole lecture I mean, this whole course in the what in the next level. 
All right, that's it for this lecture. I hope uh, it was very important. We have looked at different things. We have looked at roles. We have looked at uh, uh, menu, how to manage the menu. We have looked at so many things. So I recommend you to go and watch the videos very carefully and practice and make sure that you understand these things because uh, they are very important. Once you understand them, then it means that you can start making really powerful systems. All right, that's it for today. I see you remaining with six, five, four seconds. Uh, let's end our lecture from here. We meet tomorrow where we are going to proceed from this level. Goodbye. Don't miss tomorrow. And remember to subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel so you can always get the latest updates when I publish new videos.